On this Super Review, let's take a look at the Fio M6 Digital Audio Player. Okay, what we have here is Fio's latest digital audio player. And yes, that means iPod or MP3 player to the uninitiated. To the initiated, however, this is a DAP. Okay, a while ago, I reviewed Fio's M3K, which is, I think it's like their entry level audio player. It costs around like 80 bucks, 70, 80 bucks, something like that. And for that price, that player sounds really good. I didn't really like the UI on it, but it sounds really good. So this is like a step up for them. This is introducing some features like wireless Bluetooth stuff, right? The $70 M3K, no Bluetooth. The, I don't know, $150, $200 Fio M6. The, they claim that this is embracing a wireless future. It supports all kinds of Bluetooth codecs. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the box. We'll find out what you get inside with the Fio M6. Then I'll spend some time living with this DAP, living it with my, with my music library, trying a bunch of different earphones with it and comparing this to some other, other DAPs that I've got. Uh, I'm curious to see, is this thing worth roughly tw twice the price of the M3K? A decent spin almost knocked over my tee but de pretty decent spin for the Fio m6 um, let's go ahead and do a quick tour of the box find out what we're going to find out inside but spoiler it's going to have a really attractive digital audio player it claims to use an exynos inside so that's the processor which i think these are samsung processors these are processors that some versions of like Samsung's phones will use, I think overseas, I, mean, I don't know. Look, I don't know a, lot, a whole lot about Android phones, but I don't know what that means. I guess that means it's gonna have pretty fast performance. Uh, at least that's what I expect. Um, they support Qualcomm Aptex HD as well as regular Aptex as well as LDAC. And now these are basically, look, if you're listening to Bluetooth headphones, and I don't listen to a lot of Bluetooth headphones, frankly, because they generally just don't sound that good. But if you're gonna to listen to them and you want the best sound quality, this is what you want. Aptex HD actually sounds pretty good. LDAC, I don't think I've sampled LDAC before, but I've heard good things. Um, let's see, go around here on the box. Uh, this is, well, copyright, more information about Aptex and copyright, not very much information, but if you love QR codes, now's your chance. All right, that's your chance. Um, let's just go ahead and crack this thing open, find out what we get inside the Fio M6. All right, so we got the Fio M6 completely unboxed, and this is what you get. Most of this is paperwork. I'll be honest, this looks like a big spread, but most of this is paperwork, including the quick start guide, which look how thick that is. Did you see how big it was when I opened it up on camera? That's the quick start guide. We also get some information about Bluetooth devices, uh, a card that, well, it's a warranty card and also tells you how to guarantee that the device you have is authentic. I guess a lot of people must be ripping off Fios, huh? Um, I guess they make some pretty nice looking products. Uh, and then actually similar to the M3K, there's a little bit of literature on the open source licenses that go into the software on this thing. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that this thing has the same software because I didn't really like the software on the M3K, but that's something we're gonna find out. Uh, you do get this really cool clip that I'm just kidding. Uh, you do get a charging cable, of course, and it's actually nice that this is USB-C, um, which you've got the USB-C port on the bottom of the device. And that's pretty nice. Let's see, let's do a quick tour of this thing itself. On this side, you've got three buttons. You've got, looks like volume up and down, and you've got a play, 
pause button. This is actually the same configuration as the M3K. Um, over here on the right, you've got the micro SD card slot on the bottom. Well, we covered that, that's USB-C. And then on the top, you've got your microphone port as well as, not microphone port, headphone port, uh, as well as a power button. Uh, it did also come with some nice, actually protective stuff. So uh, it comes in this little silicon jelly case, and this is very similar to, you know, like a, a typical gel case that you might see for a smartphone. It also came with a screen protector which is plastic. It's not like a, gla a tempered glass screen protector, but it's nice that it comes with that. Frankly, I'm probably not gonna end up using that for myself just cause look, I like the way that this thing feels in my hand. Um, let's quickly bring in some of my other dApps just for comparison. All right, so File M6. Here we've got the File M3K. And then here we've got the Sony NWA45 all next to each other. Well, we can see that the M3K, it's actually a little bit thicker than the M6 and a little bit taller, but obviously narrower here uh, versus the Sony. Wow, look at that. The M6 is even smaller than the Sony in pretty much every dimension, maybe about the same thickness, uh, but it is both shorter and narrower. I don't know, that's a pretty good looking player, but really what's gonna matter is, well, how does this thing sound? And also just how is this thing to use? How, how, how good is this to use in a pocket? Um, what's the software? How predictable is it? How maybe annoying is it? That, that kind of stuff we're gonna find out. Cause even with this thing, all right, this is the Sony NWA45. This is like 240, $220 device. I like the software in this better than the M3K, but even this has some stuff that annoys me. So we'll see how the M6 does. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just gonna spend some time living with this thing and I'll come back and I'll let you know. All right, it's been a number of weeks of me listening to the File M6, and I'm ready to come back and let you know what I think about this thing. And I'll be honest, the File M6 is a device that I really, really want to love, but I don't quite love it. There are some, there are some good reasons to get this thing, but there's some things that you should definitely know about. All right, let's start with the build quality, which is one of my favorite things about this device. Like, just look at it. It's a handsome, small little player. And these rounded corners actually make this one of the most pocketable devices I've had since the original Palm Pre. And that is an old school reference. If you get the Palm Pre reference, if you love the Palm Pre, let me know in the comments. This thing reminds me of that. It's actually even smaller. The rounded corners are great. And the fact that it's got glass on both the front and the back, I think just makes it a really handsome looking player that I like to hold. It does also make it a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but frankly, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. I'm okay with the fingerprints to have something that feels this good in the hand. Um, other things that we can say about the build, you know, it's got a nice, easily accessible micro SD port. It's got USB-C charging on the bottom, which I think is nice. A couple of small complaints, actually one of them is maybe kind of a big complaint, small complaint first. There, the headphone port is on the, the top of this device. And maybe it's just because I've been using products for like the last 10 years that have had headphone ports on the bottom that a lot of the way I use a device like this, having it come out of the top just ends up being kind of annoying, right? So if I wanna put this thing in my pocket, I have to remember to turn it upside down and put it in my pocket the opposite way that I do with every other device that I've got that's got a headphone port. The other problem that I have with the headphone port on top is that if I set this thing on my desk and I'm working, listening to music, and I've got the headphone cable coming out the top and then necessarily kind of like winding around the side of it. And it's just not as elegant. And it also like it has the result of essentially removing like six to eight inches of your cable length. If your cable length is an issue for you already, just that's worth noting, noting is that it's gonna be a little bit shorter coming out of the top of the device, unless you're like listening to your music player upside down. Uh, the other issue that I have with the build, and this is a little bit more serious, is the lack of buttons. Okay, there's not a, a complete lack of buttons. There's just, in my opinion, there could be two more buttons and make this a much, much better player. All right, so buttons we've got on the top, we've got a power on off switch. And then over here on the left side, we've got three buttons. We've got play, pause, 
and we've got volume up and down. You might've noticed I didn't say you have skip buttons and that's the functionality that I wish this thing had. Okay, technically it does actually support skipping because you can press and hold the volume buttons to skip tracks. Two issues I have with that. One, sometimes, okay, actually three issues I have with that. Issue number one, a lot of times I wanna change the volume quickly by just pressing and holding it and having the volume ramp up and down real quickly. With this thing skipping tracks, you can't, you can't do that. Um, issue number two is that functionality is actually only available if the screen is turned off. If the screen is turned on, pressing and holding, okay, you actually can ramp up the volume by pressing and holding the button. Okay, that inconsistency, I just, I find that kind of a cognitive leap that I don't like. Um, and and I, I just don't like not being able to consistently expect what this button will do. Third issue that I have, this one's maybe a little bit more nitpicky, but I think that the functionality is actually reversed. Like pressing and holding the volume up skips back a track. Pressing and hold, holding, pressing and holding the volume down goes forward a track, which seems backward to me, but I, that is a smaller complaint in my opinion. Which now brings us to sort of the software and the general functionality of this device which has got some really cool features in it that you don't get in other players around this price, right? This thing's 150, maybe 180 bucks, depending on where you buy it. And for that price, I haven't seen some of these features that it's got, including a lot of, you know, really nice Bluetooth codec support, including LDAC. Now I don't have any LDAC headphones. In fact, look, I don't really listen to Bluetooth headphones that much for music. Mostly I use Bluetooth for podcasts. If I wanna listen to music, I'm basically going to end up using my corded headphones, but that's my personal thing. That's not necessarily your thing. If you want access to all those Bluetooth codecs, it's actually really nice that this thing supports them. This thing also has support for Apple AirPlay, which you might be wondering, how does that work? All right, let's say you're walking around with this device in your pocket and your, your, your iPhone, and your iPhone doesn't have a headphone port. You want access to your headphones, to listen to music that you've got playing on your iPhone, but you don't. So you can actually turn on AirPlay on this device. Your iPhone will beam music to this over AirPlay and you can plug in headphones into this thing. And the reason you might wanna do that is that it turns the M6 into sort of a, a Bluetooth receiver of sorts, but AirPlay is actually better audio quality than any Bluetooth codecs because I, I think it works over Wi-Fi, so it doesn't have to compress as much. There's, there's bandwidth there's more bandwidth in Wi-Fi than you get in Bluetooth. So the, the compression that they're able to do is lossless. So the M6 can act as essentially a little AirPlay receiver, which is a cool feature. The only downside is that it means that this thing has to be on Wi-Fi and your phone has to be on Wi-Fi. So it's a little bit limited compared to like a Bluetooth receiver, but that is kind of cool. I'm pretty sure this also works as a Bluetooth receiver if you're not in range of Wi-Fi. Some other cool features on this thing, um, derived from the fact that this is actually running Android. And they kind of downplay the fact that it's running Android because, at least according to what they say, this thing's running a relatively low power processor and it's not capable of running every Android app. It's got a few pre-installed, including some music apps I've never heard of. I'm sure they're, they're popular in markets I'm just not familiar with, but it does come with Tidal pre-installed. And the M6 does also support sideloading your own Android apps, but it will only work with apps that File has specifically whitelisted. Now, File actually recently released a firmware update that has whitelisted a couple of new apps, including SoundCloud, and Amazon Music. I don't think Spotify is one of those, but if your music is on Tidal, Amazon Music, or SoundCloud, you can listen to them. You can stream them with just this device, and I think that's actually pretty cool. Unfortunately, there is, mm, I'd say it's a pretty significant issue that I have with this thing, is that anytime this thing is accessing Wi-Fi, there's like noticeable garbled sound coming through the headphones. And now like, so you'll hear it when you start playing a song, but it seems to buffer it. And then I don't hear it during the song. But basically every time at the beginning of a song, when I'm listening to the title at least, I'm hearing that garbly, that garbly sound come through my headphones. And I'll actually have a little demo recorded here so you can hear what I'm, what I'm referring to. You can even hear it just when you turn Wi-Fi on and off.
I don't know, is that a big issue? I don't know. For me, it means that, frankly, if I'm gonna be using those streaming services, I'd probably just rather prefer using my phone. But maybe you don't have access to a phone, maybe you only have one device, and it is cool that the M6 supports that stuff. Some other side effects of this running a low-powered Android operating system that, that are worth calling out. Um, one is that performance with Tidal, I haven't tried the other music apps, but performance with Tidal is a little lacking, especially when it comes to search. And whether you wanna blame that on Tidal or you wanna blame that on File, it, it doesn't really matter. It just means that if you want this as a Tidal streaming device, you're gonna to have to deal with that. Uh, and then another thing that's worth calling out is that I mentioned that File has just recently released a firmware update for the M6. I downloaded it and installed it, and actually really cool, you can do it over the air. You don't have to plug this thing into anything. I thought that was pretty slick, but a side effect of that is that Tidal no longer will launch. Every time I try to launch it now, it'll just crash. And I've tried restarting the device, but it just crashes and I checked the forums and it seems like some other people are having the same issue and the solution is to download the APK from somewhere else and it just sounds like a pain in the butt, but there is a solution out there. It's just one of those things that's, that's worth keeping in mind with a device like this, running a custom firmware, custom version of Android from a company like Fio is that support for it, you're, you're pretty dependent on Fio support. And I don't know, hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll do you good, but I wouldn't hold out a ton of hope for them to fix issues. I would buy this device as is, expecting it to perform as is, and if they fix things or they improve things, I would, I would treat that as like a happy surprise. One other more serious issue that I have with this thing as an Android device, and maybe it's not fair to blame this on Android, but it's definitely my perception, uh, is that battery life in this thing is just not great. Um, if I have all of the radios, like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, turned off, I can get about two days worth of playback on this. If I have Wi-Fi turned on, however, this thing is dead in about a day. And that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's fine for you. Uh, I personally, you know, I'm used to my Sony Walkman, my A45, and I can go about a week in between charges with that. This thing, if I've got Wi-Fi turned on, about a day with Wi-Fi turned off, about two days. So. It's not great battery life. So in conclusion, if I were to rate the File M6, out of five stars, I'd give it three stars. Look, they've got a lot of cool features. I didn't even really talk about the sound quality, but the sound quality of this thing is excellent. No real complaints aside from the fact that Wi-Fi can sometimes interfere. Like I, I listened to this directly versus my Sony A45, which is a $220 digital audio player. And I couldn't tell any difference between the sounds. That said, I also compared this to the much cheaper Fio M3K, and I still couldn't tell any difference between the sounds. I think they are, they're all very good sounding players. So sound quality is excellent. It's got a lot of features that you don't get in cheaper players or even players at this price range. Are they features that you want? Think about that, because if these are the features that you want, you don't have a ton of options, and this is not a terrible option. It just, it's got some caveats, it's got some, I wish it had more buttons, I wish the battery life was better, and I wish that the Wi-Fi radio didn't interfere with the sound. Those are kind of my biggest complaints. But yeah, that's the Fio M6. If you're interested in checking this thing out, of course, I've got links in the description down below. While you're down there, you can hit the like button for this video, if you liked it. You can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you in the next Super Review.